Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. In this short podcast, we show you how the transactions we entered for the accounting equation are to be used to compile the income statement and then the balance sheet. To begin, let us review the transactions we used. There was investment of capital, purchase of equipment, purchase of inventories, sale of inventories, and payment of a rent expense. To prepare the income statement, we have to make use of two equations. The first is the calculation for gross profit. Sales less the cost of sales will be equal to the gross profit. Secondly, the gross profit less expenses will be equal to the net profit. If we go back to our summary of transactions, you will see that I have highlighted a transaction for sales. This is the only sale that was made, so the figure that I am going to use for sales is £6,000. I put this figure as the first figure on my income statement. The total sales revenue of £6,000. I now need to determine the cost of sales. How much did we pay for the units that we sold? I can find this in the transactions. Again, I have highlighted the relevant transaction. The figure that I need is £4,000. I enter the cost of sales onto the income statement. Now I need to subtract this from the sales revenue, which will give me a figure of £2,000 for the gross profit. The next step is to see what our operating expenses were. We recorded one transaction that was an operating expense. This was the payment of £500 for the rent. So my next step is to enter the operating expenses to the income statement. I subtract this from gross profit to give a figure of £1,500 for the net profit, which gives me my completed income statement. The figure of £1,500 will be used later when we construct the balance sheet. We will now construct the balance sheet using the information from the transactions and also the information determined from the income statement. Here is the information that we need to know and the order in which we will make use of it. We need to know non-current, then current assets, current liabilities, then non-current liabilities. This gives us the first part of the accounting equation as assets less liabilities. Then we find the original capital and any profit or loss that needs to be added. This gives us the equity part of the balance sheet. I have identified one transaction relating to non-current assets when the purchase of equipment for £4,000 was made. So I can start my balance sheet by recording my £4,000 for equipment. I can now focus on determining current assets. The first of these is the value for any inventories. Two transactions are relevant. I bought £6,000 of inventories, but have since sold £4,000 worth, leaving me with £2,000 of inventories. This figure of £2,000 is the figure that I need to use for inventories. The second type of current asset relates to any monies that the business may be owed after making credit sales. I have identified one transaction here, which shows the business is owed £6,000. We class this as trade receivables and enter the figure of £6,000. The last of our current assets will be the amount of cash that the business now has. I have highlighted two transactions that let us determine this figure. We started with £50,000 being deposited in the bank and we have since made a payment of £500 for rent. That gives us a balance of £49,500. This figure is entered onto the balance sheet. My total for assets then becomes £61,500. However, 
I need to subtract from this any current liabilities that need to be paid in the next period. I have identified one transaction for £6,000. I enter this figure under Trade Payables. There is also an amount owed that is not a current liability. This is the bank loan for £4,000. I have entered the figure of £4,000 as a non-current liability. I now calculate the figure for assets less liabilities. This gives me a figure of £51,500. We will now turn to equity. The very first transaction records the initial capital of £50,000. We enter this figure as the owner's equity. Now I need to return to the income statement. Here the figure of £1,500 was recorded as profit and we need to transfer this into the balance sheet. The figure of £1,500 is entered to the balance sheet as retained earnings. Adding these we have a figure of £51,500 for equity. You can see this is equal to the figure we arrived at for assets less liabilities. So we have balanced our accounting equation which was assets less liabilities equals equity. This ends our short podcast on the income statement and balance sheet brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. For further information about Parkbench Tutors please visit parkbenchtutors.com.